the quarterback position in Boston College football recruiting has been held as a tight secret. We had no clue who it was. Well, we finally have some clues, and that secret may be revealed soon. You are locked on Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, AJ Black. I'm the editor of Eagle Insider, part of the 247 Network. Hope you all are having a terrific Tuesday here on Locked On BC. Today, we are going to talk about that quarterback position because there is big news coming out in the recruiting world we're going to look at what that crystal ball is showing we'll talk about who this kid could be and a whole lot more we're going to also look at what are some of the key traits that we have seen out of the commitments from boston college they're almost up to 20 15 of them we know about there's five secret ones we'll get into what they're looking like and what we're seeing out of those recruits and finally blake james comes out with a big big tease and i want to talk to you what we think it could be, what it might be, and everything in between. Now, let's kick this off. On Monday morning, a crystal ball made by this amazing man named A.J. Black went out for a quarterback with an equally amazing name. His name is Shaker Razik. And why is this important? Why are we talking about this? Well, Bill O'Brien's been the head coach of Boston College now for three months. We know what the big board looks like for the defensive backs. We know what the def- the big board looks like for offensive linemen, wide receivers. We know everything about all of these positions. But the one position that is with, with, with trade secrets that are locked tighter up than Fort Knox is the quarterback. Look, folks, I cover this stuff. My, my, my role... My big part of 247 is to get you get you the the most up to date recruiting news. And I'm telling you, as the guy, most of you guys come to me for that news too. And I'm not being I'm not being uh, I don't need to be humble about that. I, it, it's true. The news has been for me hidden too. They they the staff has been. I, I've tried. I've tried to talk to them. I got nothing. Well, this morning. The first nugget dropped. Shaker Razig, a three-star quarterback, rated an 86 from 247, committed to Utah, decommitted from Utah. Then, I'm going to say yada, 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 I put in a crystal ball for him to end up at BC. Well, what's the yada, yada, yada? Well, folks... I can tell you now because he's decommitted from Utah. He was at BC this weekend. He was a secret visitor. Now, I get that. The staff at any school, when it's a a committed player to another school, they want to keep that on the DL. They usually don't tell me um, if there's a player there. Sometimes they will, and then I get yelled at if I say something about it. But that's not here or there. But he was at BC this weekend. And for my sources, this is a guy that was the top of BC's quarterback board. He threw fifth for over the last two seasons in Oklahoma. We'll get into Oklahoma in a second. 5,200 yards. Uh, he had over 52 touchdowns to nine re- interceptions. He had 75% reception rate. Completion rate, excuse me. That is excellent. And he was at Utah, but Utah has a second quarterback now. And so he's moved on. Now, all my tea leaves point to BC. I put my crystal ball in. I feel confident that he's going to end up committing there. And if this is the case, this is a game-changing quarterback for Boston College. This is a quarterback that redefines how quarterback recruiting is working at BC because you now have a guy that players want to play for that recruits want to go to because they know Bill O'Brien's histories with Tom Brady, with 
uh, Deshaun Watson and and uh, Bryce Bryce Young from Alabama. Like he has a history, and now everyone knows about it. And once everyone knows about it, they're gonna want to play at BC. You're no longer gonna get, and this is not a knock on those kids, but the the uh, Jonathan Montagues and Jacoby Robinsons who are are projects. They're guys that take a lot of time to build up, and you're hoping you can find a diamond in the rough. Both of those guys, and and this is again not a knock, were under recruited. They didn't get much uh, many offers. This kid Rizig, if this is who they get, he has an offer list that includes Illinois, Missouri, uh, Utah, Oklahoma State. I like he's got like a dozen. Of, uh, he has like a dozen uh, Power Five offers. This would be a big, big deal. And yes, his off his star rating is not a four star, but I trust that Bill O'Brien and Jonathan DiBiaso know what they're doing when it comes to recruiting quarterbacks. You have a coach that has the pedigree that O'Brien does, that when he sits down and watches films, he knows what he's looking at. He's not just, he's not like, I'll say it. He's not Jeff Halfley, who's a defensive guy going, oh, this guy would be great. Or, you know, just taking a a word from, you know, Rob Chadzinski that this is going to be a guy that works. O'Brien has a track record of, of success. So when you see that there's a crystal ball that I put out and Tom Loy, uh, the 247 national analyst put out, we, we we're in this together on this one. You feel good because you got some names and we'll get into some of the details about this in a moment. But if you get Shaker Rizik, if this is the guy that you bringing in at quarterback, that is the biggest commitment that Bill O'Brien has landed at Boston College. Now he hasn't landed him yet. He hasn't announced. We don't know. I'm telling you, I feel confident that it's going to happen. So this is a big, big deal. And my final thoughts on this is the other the other piece I wanted to bring up is if this is the guy they get, he's from Oklahoma. When is the last recruit BC has landed from the state of Oklahoma. Now, I know I got some of you older Eagles out there. That you know your history. You're going to probably say, hey, AJ, so-and-so from like 1984 played there. And I love it. I, if there is somebody from the from the history books that I missed out, I don't have the, um, the Letterman's uh, guide in front of me right now. But I can't, I can't think in the last 10 years of anybody from Oklahoma. But this, if that's the case, this is another another opportunity for Ray Brown to show why he's good because he was tweeting at Jonathan DiBiaso about being a helper in, in this case, which again, more tea leaves, right? But he's going to probably get his first Oklahoma recruit. I also have a crystal ball. Got a m- bunch of, up on 247 for Ashton Cunningham, who is Rizig's teammate. I'm not sure what position he's going to play, but he was on for an official visit. Is Oklahoma becoming a hotbed for BC recruiting? It's the weirdest thing and something I never thought BC would be part of. Like, I get Texas. I get Florida, Georgia. Those are, like, recruit-heavy, like, football hotbeds, like, where you want to get your guys. Oklahoma, before this, I really didn't even think of Oklahoma in in recruiting. But, hey, if Ray Brown is going to open that door for BC, that's a nice... Uh, problem to have. So that's another piece of this story. Now, in a moment, I want to talk about the commitments that BC has already landed. There's a few themes that I want to get into, and I want to talk all about that in just a moment. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the job. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's not just a job board. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. 
Terms and conditions apply. This is Locked On BC, and I'm your host, AJ Black. Now, BC's recruiting class is really starting to come together. As Jonathan DiBiaso, the quarterback's coach, tweeted out on Monday night, there are 20-plus commitments. We know about 15. I've already told you there's, I think, still five silent commitments. One of those might be that quarterback. But now that we have a majority of this class in place, and as, as I said, um, it doesn't have to be capped at 25 this year, folks. There's a new rule that they could, depending on the amount of scholarships that they anticipate having, they could go up to whatever if they wanted to. It all depends on, on their roster management, how much room that they have. But I look at this class, a class that Bill O'Brien had only three months to put together. Remember, folks, when you're looking at those star ratings, when you're looking at the, the amount of offers a guy has, a lot of these schools have had a one-year head start on a school like Boston College because their coaching staff has been there. Like you look at the defensive side of the ball, all of BC's defensive coach coaching staff that could have made relationships with players are gone. They were all gone, so they all had to have new names come in, and they're they're basically starting from scratch. Offensively, a little different, right? Like you have most of your offensive staff still in place, but Overall, you have a new head coach, and that, that's where the buck stops. So it's been a bit of a change there. And I think that's really an important factor to consider when you're looking at um, how BC is att attempting recruiting. Now, you could be like Syracuse. I see what Syracuse is doing. Yeah, they've gotten some good recruiting. I look at a lot of what they're doing as, you know, that's great that they've made some relationships. But I also think that there is a potential that it's a lot of like shallow, you know, empty. I I don't want to say empty promises because I don't know what Fran Brown's doing, but it, I feel like BC's getting deeper, looking at the future, talking about like a lot of the deeper things while Syracuse is having a coach ride, ride around in cars and sing rap songs together with their, with their players. Like, yeah, fun. That's great. But like, are we going to see a mass exodus of Syracuse players in a year when they realize that their coach has never coached a head coach? It's never been a head coach before. I digress. Back to BC. One big factor that I think is important, there's like there's a few here, is size and speed. I think those are two big through points that we're seeing here through BC's recruiting. You look at speed, you've brought in some really, really speedy guys. You got guys like TJ Green, who we don't talk about a lot, I and mean, most people have forgotten about him. Cornerback, he runs a sub 11 100 yard dash. That is incredible. Samaj Fleming, wide receiver from Florida, same thing. A couple of the other guys that they had on campus this weekend, Ashton Cunningham, I mentioned him, same thing. They're going for guys that have speed, but they're also going for guys that have college frames that can be filled out to play. I look at Israel Oladadapu and Zakari Thomas, who both committed in the last 24 hours. Both of those dudes are legit ACC like frames. Like they they probably have more. You know, they're high school kids, so they get they they still need to get their college body ready. But and I hate using that term, but that's kind of what they're at, right? But I look at them, and Oladapapo is bigger than Donovan Azaraco and Neto Paula, both of the edge rushers that BC had to have. And they're both fine, but they're bigger dudes. Zach Zakari Thomas is bigger than probably most of the uh, linebackers BC has because most of BC's linebackers are converted safeties. So they're physical. They're violent. You know, that's a that's a halfway term, but it, it seems like it's the case with these kids. Watch the film of a lot of the kids that they're bringing out on the defensive side of the ball. Micah Amadi, their defensive tackle. Big dude. Big. And I love the way he plays. You've got the defensive backs all over the place, right? Whether it's Marcellus Townsend or um, Ray Sykes, who's bigger, or Mari da uh, Marion Davis. All of these dudes are bigger framed guys. And I think that's that's good, Right. The other piece, and I find this interesting as well, 
how many defensive backs is BC going to bring in? And what does that say about what this new staff sees as their depth at a position that everyone th- said Jeff Halfley and Azar Abdul Rahim. And I said, I'll take, I'll take the bullet. I said the same thing are, are they know what they're doing? BC clearly sees that they need to build up depth there. Cause they don't have it because they're, they're up at like five or six commits right now. And I, I'm not, I'm telling you folks, I don't think they're done. They're, they're getting safeties. They're getting defensive backs. They're going all over the place to get these commitments because they need it. Like the Bill O'Brien and Tim Lewis, their defensive coordinator are looking at this and going, we have a problem. We need to build up depth there. And this is a major issue here. So defensive back is a position that they clearly had to target because they don't feel like they have the guys uh, to, to do what they want to do. Now I've talked about, we'll talk about it later. What, you know, as, as more of these silence come out, I'll wait to give you who, those uh you know what positions are still in need because they still have one more official visit weekend coming up they they have a group of kids a lot of them are committed this weekend i think like griff collins tj green um there's a few guys that are already already committed that are coming um but there's still other kids coming like charleston colton another defensive back he'll be here this weekend and i bet there'll be i i get this feeling that maybe there'll be a few names on this week's uh visitor list as well that um were either late offers or guys that as their sh- group shrinks uh of guys that are still available that they're still trying to build up on so it's gonna be an interesting one to watch but this class is coming along nicely it's bigger it's got a lot of guys that were on their big board guys that they wanted and, you know, I think the quarterback is going to be the key, right? Like if they get Razig, then, you know, that's kind of like a bow, a cherry on top of the, the um, recruiting Sunday, right? Now in our final segment, I'm going to talk about BC Athletics because Blake James just tweeted out a really interesting cryptic tweet about the future of BC Athletics. And I want to talk about it and kind of spitball some of the things I'm thinking it could mean. We'll get into all of that in just a moment. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more. And you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Now, I'm a loser from Boston, right? I Right now, I'm recording in the middle of Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Because I have stuff to do, and this is what I got to do. But before, I I don't even know, you know, obviously the game's still going on. I got action on FanDuel for Boston Moneyline. I feel like they're going to win this. And they were up nine last I checked, but who knows? Things could change, you know. uh, Anything can happen. Now, new customers, if you want to join in, you can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can bet on anything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit one out of the park. All you got to do is go to fanduel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is locked on Boston college. And on Monday night, athletic director, Blake James tweeted out the following. All it said was big news coming. Eagle, Eagle, Eagle. That's all it said. And, you know, when you're looking at that, you're wondering to yourself, what is he talking about? That seems like a big deal, right? That's more than they're wearing new uniforms or they got a new shoe deal for the school. I I hope. (laughs) I hope that's not the case. If, if you have your athletic director tweeting that out, that means that something big is happening. And that makes you speculate, right? I haven't heard anything. I have not heard what it could be. I have some, some ideas. Here's some of the things I'm wondering if it could be. The biggest one that I think folks are wondering about, the one thing that folks have been talking about feel seemingly for the last 25 years is renovations to Alumni Stadium. You know, it's been forever. You know, they've added in new LED boards, the the scrolls on the side. They've added in new um, concessions at times. Uh, they have new sound systems. But this, the, the, the stadium itself is in dire need of an upgrade. 
whether it's new seats, uh, what many of you guys have said, toilets up in the, uh, in the upper deck. There's a lot that you could be building here. I think that would be the biggest successful re- revelation that he brings up. Is it if it's something to do with renovating alumni stadium? Now, you could go bigger picture here and say, are they building a new stadium? Maybe they're going to demolish alumni. Now, I'm not high right now. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not not saying that that's going to happen. I don't think that BC would ever do that. I feel like alumni is going to be around for 300 years. But I really do feel like that they could be doing some renovation. That could be one thing. Then folks could always say the other thing that could that uh, that, that I've heard a lot of folks saying, which is men's lacrosse. I don't think that's going to be it. There is the Title IX issue with you have to balance men's sports with women's sports. And men's lacrosse puts in so you have to put so much money into a program like men's lacrosse. There isn't a comparable counterbalance on the women's side to make that happen. I mean, maybe gymnastics, like if you're going to add men's lacrosse and gymnastics or something like that, I get I, and I don't even I, I'm just spitballing. I don't know if that's this, the, the same level there, but. I don't see that happening. I don't think it's going to be men's lacrosse. And I think I heard recently he said somewhere that that wasn't going to be the case. That would be something else. Then then there's sports-specific practice facilities. That's the other one. That's that's right underneath my um, alumni stadium renovations that I think could be possible. They have a whole bunch of new land. They have Pine Manor. They still have the stuff over in the Brighton campus. Could they be building a sports specific practice facility? Now, the school, the two big ones I can think of that I would think would be up on their priority list hockey and lacrosse, women's lacrosse. Women's lacrosse clearly is becoming a very important program at Boston College, and they deserve to have some of the best facilities. I know they just redid the locker rooms, but they also could use their own practice facility. I think they used Newton. Uh, for their practices. And I know they use alumni at times too, Um, but maybe they want their own spot. They could be one more likely though, because of the difficulties that it brings when they have to switch between basketball and hockey is hockey. You know, you're using a one stadium for both of those. You have to manage their time. And now you have the new practice facility for basketball, but wouldn't it be nice to have it all in one spot. So maybe that would be something they could be considering. Those would be like, so practice facility and renovations to alumni stadium. I, f- I feel like from my perspective are the only acceptable answers that could be to this, this tweet. If it's something about apparel barf, if it's something about like future scheduling, no, if it's something about like a, like some random corporate partnership that he, I I know Blake would not do that <laughs> because the fans would be really upset. Like, yes, we have saw, you know, done a new deal with McGovern Toyota about whatever. No, no, no. They, he wouldn't do that. So those would be massively disappointing. So I don't think it'll be that. Hopefully it's that first one. Hopefully it's alumni renovations. I also hope it has nothing to do with like future scheduling and football. Uh, because with the way things are going, you could be scheduling, and I hope to gosh they're not scheduling a school like this, like like Georgia or Ohio State or whatever. Like, let's take a chill pill on those ones for a while, and hopefully that's not it. Maybe maybe it's an uh, infusion of money. I don't know what it is, but it better be something good. <laughs> that's all I got to say there. Now, hopefully we'll be back again. To, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk more about this quarterback situation. Hopefully we'll have some resolution there and everything else in between. Because if he, you know, if we get news about the commitment, you know, you could find it here on Locked On BC. Follow me on Twitter at AJBlack247. Get all my news. Get all my crystal balls over at Eagle Insider. I got a whole bunch of stuff up there right now. You do not want to miss out on any of that. Become a subscriber. And if you are listening to this, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're on your car a lot, make sure you subscribe to Locked On BC wherever you get your podcast. Because This is a daily podcast, and, you know, sometimes you're in a car, you want to get your your BC news on your way to work. I do this in 20, 25 minutes of you knowing everything that is going on with BC sports from a guy who follows the teams, who lives and breathes this stuff. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you all for listening to Locked On BC, and we'll be back again tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Boston College, your team every day.